the whole macro space affecting uh, the ability of some consumer loans, so the consumers to pay back some of their loans. Because when the when the economy slows down, in a bit, uh, inadvertently, you will see an increase in MPLs for consumer loans such as credit cards and uh, you know car loans and stuff like that. Because the once the government government is a big uh, spender in this economy, and if they if they begin to say this year that they are going to have uh, austerity, that means the trickle down effect will definitely hit the the, the micro uh, the micro and the macro space, and you see a lot of uh, firms unable to some firms will lay off because maybe they get a lot of contracts from the government and the government will retrench, so they also retrench. And if these firms, if their workers had outstanding consumer loans, then it will also be an issue for the banks. So we're, we're, we're going to see a lot of uh, impact from this uh, slide on oil prices. Okay, so what banks are positioned to perform better in this environment? Okay, that's a good question. Um, we think that banks who are diversified, uh, who have a diversified uh, income stream or diversified uh, revenue stream, are in a better position. And banks who also have a good risk management uh, uh, in place, based on history, historically, and those who are able to control their costs are in a better position to, to weather the storm. Um, if you look at the banks, uh, some of the one of the better performers here to date has been Stanbic uh, IBTC. They are only down four percent this year. That's their stock price compared to about 14% of the NSC all share index and uh, about 20% for a bank like GTB. You know, so what is the, what is Stanley doing well? They have different income streams, they have their wealth business, they have their pension business, they have their custodian business, they have their retail banking business, they have their fixed income and FX and capital market business. So all that has, you know, so with, with them having such diversified uh, uh, source of income, they can write this uh, rough patch uh, better than most of the other banks that have just, maybe just play the, the, the retail banking uh, or just play the TV, TV space, uh, that is the treasury bill space or the bond space. So, but also, on the other side, you also have banks that have a very good uh, risk management and, uh, and also watch their costs. Banks like GTB and uh, Zenit Bank, they've been very good with uh, risk management in the past, and we think they will, they will be able to also carry it through at this time. And you have big banks like FBN uh, Holdings, who also have very low cost of funds because of their wide uh, branch network. Although the increase in interest rate also means they pay a little bit more as, uh, on in as interest on deposits for a lot of their funds. But if they can be able to translate that cheap source of funding into uh, higher uh, top line and bottom line, then they're also in a good position to, to make that happen. So, you know, that is what we are, we are seeing, but in a few weeks we'll see the full, full year results of all these banks, but we think IPTC, GTB, Zenit, and uh, to a little extent, First Bank are in good position. Okay, so the last one. Um, do you think a bank cheap now to buy in stock market? Well, if you look at valuations, the, 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 the bank valuations are quite cheap, but uh, they saying in the market that you, just because something is cheap, it doesn't mean it can be cheaper. You know, so um, a lot of the banks are selling below a uh, one-time value. Some are selling at 0.5 times uh, value. Um, we think that if you are going to go into some of these names, you have to be nimble um, and probably wait till the earnings results start kicking in, which will also kind of coincide with uh, the presidential elections being over, to 
get a clear picture of what actually happened and some of the guidelines that uh, the banks will throw out in the, in the coming quarter. But we don't see the banks going to zero. So at some point, uh, investors will step in to buy these banks. There is uh, also the Ancon port, which is similar to the Benaki port, which basically means there's a flow uh, underneath these banks below which they won't go any lower because you have Amcon there. The CEO of Amcon uh, said recently, uh, yesterday in an interview, that if there is a need to step in to buy MPLs from these banks, that Amcon will step in and buy um, MPLs. So that provides a kind of flow. We don't see us going back to the 2009 levels where banks um, were going bust and had to be. Some had to be bailed out, some had to be merged. We don't see that happening. So, if there's a spike in MPO that is a result of this tough macro environment, or if one bank gets its risk management not quite right, and as a result of the slide in oil prices, uh, gets blown up by one of the loans it made, Amcon will be there to clean that up. You know, so, we think that the banks uh, will have a rough year also this year but uh, we don't see any uh, return to the 2009 crisis for the banks. Mm -hmm. Thank you Mr. Patrick, thank you for coming in. Thank you for watching Street Budget today. Might we see you next week. I am Amadi Chinelli.